How you doing, everyone? I'm uh, Matt O'Connell. I'm a JavaScript developer at Adobe. Um, currently, I'm working on the Adobe Portfolio and Behance teams. Right now, we're in the process of converting both Adobe Portfolio and Behance over to Vue applications. So today, I'm going to talk a little bit about everyone's favorite topic, I'm sure, which is testing um, UI components. So first, I'm going to start with the goals of testing. Um, why test our applications? Why write all this extra code even more than our production code often? Um, I would say that number one, the testing instills confidence. It also removes the fear of changing code on a larger code base. So if I'm a new developer or I'm working on a large code base and I'm unfamiliar with the entirety of the code base and be confident that my change is not going to bring down the rest of the system. The factor that I introduce some new code knowing that I'm not going to break the system, I'm not going to get a call at 1 a.m. Number two, I would say good testing um, leads to higher code quality. Here's a quote that I found in Clean Code by Uncle Bob Martin. Um, it's test a single concept in each test function. I find that when I'm doing this, it leads to code that's following the single re responsibility principle, uh, more modular code, and writing the test ultimately makes you take a step back and think about what is my production code doing? What is the component really meant to do here? So an example of that might look something like this. I look at a test, I see it should display a formatted username. I need to add a additional functionality to this component, so it should display a formatted username with a custom avatar. I then keep going in adding more functionality, a little bit of logic. At this point, the tests, if I haven't seen it in my production code, are leading me to take a step back and think about, like, what is this component really supposed to do at this point? So the third thing is uh, documentation. Good tests act as documentation, dynamic documentation. Uh, oftentimes, we'll write comments around our functions, our components, but those can end up out of date. No one's uh, maintaining the comments sometimes, and they can get lost. So here we can see we have an add button component. It's going to take in some props, a label prop. It's going to emit some events, the add event. And right off the bat, without looking at any of the production code, we have an idea of what this component is supposed to do and what its API is. So what happens when we achieve these three goals? We have confidence to change high code quality, well-documented code. Ultimately, this should lead to developer happiness. Um, and then on top of that, when developers are happy, it's easy for us to create a better product, and the customers are happy too. So those are all the goals of testing. Now I'm going to get a little bit more into the specifics of testing view components, UI components in general. First off, I'd say we want to test our component contract. And a component contract might be defined as the expected behavior of your component and what assumptions are reasonable to have about its usage. So this can also be explained as the public interface of a component. Component is really composed of a series of inputs. In Vue's case, it would be props, user interaction, or lifecycle methods, and a series of outputs, which would be events and rendered output. Additionally, certain types of tests may test the boundaries between a parent component and a child component. So I'm going to dive into a few examples here. First, I would say if we have logic in our template, we probably want to test it. In this case, we have a settings bar component. We have a button that will display if our logged in prop is set to true. So we have a log out button. So our test may look something like this. I'm going to use a Voriaz. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but it's a well-known view testing library. Um, so this mount function comes from a Voriaz. Basically, we met, mount our component. We're going to assert that our log out button exists. And then we're going to set our props to make logged in equal false. And we're going to assert that the log out button doesn't exist. So it's a very simple test. But all we're doing is testing, oh, these are the Voriaz functions. Um, and all we're doing is testing the props input and the rendered output. So I'm also going to talk about what's outside the scope of component tests. One, I would say implementation details. 
Um, if you have a square component and it has a square button, and when you click on that square button, it emits an event with, say, the squared version of our number here, which is 10. We could use math.how, or we could import a function from some math library. No matter what we do, the end result is always the same. So the test might look something like this. We're again using mount from the Voriaz. Um, we are listening for our squared event, and we're going to assert that the value we get is equal to 100. And then we're going to go and we're going to trigger the click on the button itself. In this case, we're just testing user interaction as the input and events with, a certain, with certain data as the output. So you might kind of see a pattern here. We're testing our components more like a black box. We're not testing every function within them. We're not testing every method. We're not testing computed properties. Um, this is one way of testing, too. This is not necessarily the right way. Um, also, we may want to avoid testing the framework itself. If we pass a prop to our template and there's no logic involved, we don't necessarily need to test that view is going to render that prop accordingly. We can expect that view's framework is covering these cases. This is expected out of the framework out of the box. Additionally, prop validation, if we're not doing anything special with prop validation, we're saying we expect some string and um, we're writing tests to say it should warn us when we pass a number. I, I, don't, I think those tests are extraneous. They're probably unnecessary. Because this functionality should be tested by view out of the box. We should really be trusting view to do what is responsible for us. That should be us. So another thing I want to talk about is kind of two different approaches to component tests. We have an integration-like approach where you have a parent component that is responsible for its children components and their children components, and it knows how all of their templates are set up and it knows details about them. On the other hand, we have a shallow type of testing, which is subcomponents more than one level down are not necessarily part of our component contract. So we're not going to reach into some subcomponent and assert that it's rendering some paragraph tag correctly. So here's an example of a counter component. This counter component has a button component, subcomponent which has an increment event. It will then increment the count within the parent component, pass the count <coughs> down to counter display. In the integration like test, we'd be testing the whole flow. Basically, we'd be testing that when we reach, we would reach into the button, trigger a click on the button within the component, and then assert that within counter display, it's rendering correctly within the template. The test might look something like this. Um, using a Voriaz to mount, we find the button within our component, we trigger a click, and then we find our counter display, we find the count display element with the class count display, and we assert that the text has that updated prop. Um, again, we don't really, or, or we're actually reaching into both subcomponents and asserting things. We're still testing like a black box where we're just passing a unit. Um, our input is user interaction, and our output is rendered output. So shallow tests are slightly different. Um, for this case of the counter component, our shallow test may be just testing the boundaries between our parent component and its children components. We may have two tests rather than that one integration-like test. And the test, the first test would test that um, we're passing the correct pop to our counter display. After that, we don't care how it's going to render it. That's just not our responsibility as a parent component. And we're going to assert that when our parent component receives um, the increment event, that increment, it increments its data accordingly. Again, we don't care how it was triggered in shallow tests. We don't reach in and trigger clicks or assert um, DOM elements. So in our shallow tests, for our counter, we are just testing the boundaries between our counter and its sub -component. And the beauty of this, why you would want to test like this possibly, is um, as long as your subcomponents maintain the same API, say they take the same props, or they emit the same events, you can easily substitute them out and still maintain coverage for your entire component system. So there are a few trade-offs here you can imagine. Um, integration tests are a little more difficult to maintain. I found that when you change some production code, you may have to change several tests in an integration-like structure, uh, whereas the coverage is very high, so you feel safe with integration tests. 
the modularity also is low. You can't easily sub out subcomponents. Um, on the shallow side, we have high maintainability. When you change some production code, you may test, change one test, maybe two. Uh, medium coverage, there are ways to theoretically break shallow tests, and high modularity. So like I said before, it allows you to sub in subcomponents with similar APIs or parent components with similar APIs. So do you want to learn more about view testing? Um, I would say the next steps might be taking a look into testing Vuex, that's Vue's state management um, system, an external one. And it's fairly straightforward, but a good next step in leveling up your view testing skills. And then I would also take a look at Evoriaz, and with that, view test utils. So view test utils is the soon-to-be official frame of test utility library for Vue. It's written mainly by the guy who wrote Evoriaz, and it's going to share most of the APIs. So it should be an easy um, transition from one to the next. And then snapshot testing with Jest. This is a different subject. Uh, this can take up its own talk in itself as well as end-to-end -end tests with um, either WebDriver.io or Nightwatch. Same deal, it's a slightly different type of testing, <coughs> a little bit higher level. Um, and so, hope this has been a good jumping off point for those either new to view or new to UI uh, testing in general, and thanks for listening. that coverage in shallow testing is medium. Does that mean that you don't place as much weight on coverage percentage as a metric for evaluating unit tests? Is there a better metric that you would use uh, for evaluating how good the testing is on a, on a project? Um, I mean, I don't, I don't place a lot of weight on coverage, uh, like a coverage as a statistic, per se, but it's not something that's quantifiable, but I guess if you are not writing integration tests and you have tons of components and people are changing event names, um, well, what I could say is that the amount of bugs that you get after deploying into production, I feel, would maybe go up with shallow tests, depending on how they're implemented. Still, yeah, that, that, that's <laughs> what they expect. <laughs>